what we're going to talk about today is is uh, ten strategies to overcome a commission gap. And actually, I've added two more uh, to the presentation because we've nice. we're actually up to twelve uh, phenomenal ways, nine of which do not reduce your pay. So uh, we're not going to be talking here about ways to give up your money uh, today because you've earned it, you've worked hard for it. And now I want to make sure that you get it. So we're going to talk a bit of, about your value proposition and negotiating and ways your lender can help you actually win more of the time. So uh, really excited about, uh, about being able to present all this to you. All right, folks, we are back today. We're back. And I got a treat for you guys uh, this week. We have Paul Dolan, uh, who is a, you know, in the mortgage space. But more than that, uh, he's really emerging as a thought leader when it comes to this whole kind of NAR settlement, uh, you know, uh, adaptation period, you know, uh, uh, paradigm shift, uh, you know, all, all these things to do with the NAR settlement. He's emerging as a really great content creator, creating some great, great, great suggestions and advice for agents on. And I love the title of this talk that he made, 10 Ways to Still Get Paid, Right. Like 10 yeah. ways to get paid in this new world, right? So I know people are going to love uh, uh, listening to this, watching this. Paul, first off, welcome to the group. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and sure. your journey into mortgage? Go for it. Yeah, so real quick, uh, I've been uh, in lending for almost 20 years now. I'm actually at a, uh, a company right now where I'm, I'm able to loan in uh, 49 states uh, and then um, my my wife has now joined in the business, and so she's so I'm with a bank, a boutique bank, uh, and my wife is actually a broker, a mortgage broker. So we have the best of both worlds. We can uh, we can do anything, um, and I also do commercial lending now. So I've got institutional commercial lending rates. So I want to be that person that that a real estate agent can call, a, a borrower can call, and say, Paul, can you do this? And the answer is always yes. It's never no. Uh, so we, we look for ways to help people build wealth through real estate. That is what I am known for, is helping my clients, helping my real estate partners look for ways to actually build wealth through real estate. And uh, so this is, to me, this is just one more way to continue to build wealth, to protect your commission, uh, to make sure you get paid. So, Yeah, 100%. Because one of the, one of the you know, ideas that are floating out there is that because of this NAR settlement changes, because of the shift, the paradigm, it's gonna be way harder to get paid as a buyer's agent. That's the you know conventional wisdom, right? That's the thought yeah. process. We're gonna make less money. Why? Because the buyer's gonna pay out of pocket. And how are they gonna afford that, Gus? There is no way, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? So that is yeah. the starting point for a lot of people, Paul. I mean, that's reality, but we are here to educate you uh, to give you some tools in that toolbox on 10 ways to actually make this work and get paid. Take it, take it away, Paul. Hey, absolutely. And I appreciate the opportunity to, to look at this and, and go through it. I am going to go through it rather quickly uh, because there's a lot of content here. Uh, and and just, uh, I'm sorry, I, I am getting over a cold or a virus or who knows what, but uh, you'll have to forgive the Barry White voice and hopefully it sticks around for this whole uh, for this whole session. So uh, let's get started. So what we're going to talk about today is, is uh, 10 strategies to overcome a commission gap. And actually, I've added two more uh, to the presentation because we've nice. we're actually up to 12 uh, phenomenal ways, nine of which do not reduce your pay. So uh, we're not going to be talking here about ways to give up your money. Uh, today because you've earned it, you've worked hard for it, and now I want to make sure that you get it. So we're going to talk a bit of, about your value proposition and negotiating and ways your lender can help you actually win more of the time. So uh, really excited about uh, about being able to present all this to you. And, uh, you know, Gustavo, please feel free to jump in if at any time uh, you have questions here. So um, for it. Hey, this presentation, here's the yawner slide that I have to do. It's not legal advice. Consult your attorney or your broker about these ideas, implementing them. I am not an attorney. I only play one on television. All right, right we're past that. Uh, so here we are. Um, our goal, my goal is to help protect your commission. And so I look at that as part of our partnership is how can I help protect the commission? of my real estate partners. 
you know, we, the mortgage industry has gone through a number of shifts. The real estate business has gone through shifts. And in those, we have looked for ways for how to protect your commission. So here is the world, my world, according to Paul Dolan, uh, what's changing, right? How do I see this? How, do I, how did I get to this presentation? Uh, one, we've got to have a new mindset, right? A new uh, value proposition is totally critical. And I know people are overusing this, but it, you know what? It's true. I don't care if people are overusing it. They need to overuse it, in my opinion, because the value proposition for some people before was I'll open the doors, I'll write the contract, we'll get you some things, and then we'll close, right? And and the buy and the seller's gonna pay me, right? Good deal. We, you don't have to pay me. So now it's what is your value proposition? Do you have one? Can you actually say your value proposition in a 20-second elevator speech? So number one, new mindset. You got to be creative, you got to be different. Right. I've, I've walked into rooms of real estate agents and asked, how many is your value proposition negotiating? Everybody raises their hands. I mean, so we go through and negotiating is important, but what is it that makes you different? Right. Are you the person who helps them build value and wealth through real estate? I would love to show you how to do that and how to present that and maybe be a partner with them that shows them how the strategies that you help them build actually help them grow wealth through real estate. We have new contracts, of course. We're not talking about that today at all, right? I will not talk about the contracts. I'm going to talk about what to maybe put in the contract, but we're that's you, that's your broker, that's your association, not talking about that. But, you know, now we have buyer agreements, showing agreements, area agreements, specific builder, you know, there's all different things that are out there. I am not going to be an expert on 50 states and 50 ways and 102 different types of contracts. Uh, but uh, so let's not talk about that today. New communication, right? So some of the things we can't immediately now see what what uh, kind of compensation is being offered on a house. Or there's going to have to be increased coordination between the loan officer, the, the the buyer's agent, the buyer, about how each house is going to impact their cash position if they can get compensation or not. Uh, and that's where we're going to get into today. What are the strategies for dealing with that? And then lastly, new negotiations. I'm actually excited about this. To me, for me, this is really cool because. Before the 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 seller would offer that or the broker would offer that cooperative compensation to you as a broker's agent, you actually had, I think, less control over what they paid. Would you agree there, Gustavo? A hundred percent. Not only do I agree, Paul, I'm already seeing clients of mine. This is in the in the Bay Area, not a small market, not a small amount of money. There on the buyer side, they had seen their commission split of that listing commission go down over the years, right? competitive market that, i mean that, right. you know I, I wish they were doing price fixing they were they're from competition been going down 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 over the last 60 days 50 percent increase on their buyer yep. side commission okay why because of what you just said they're more in control yeah absolutely i i think this honestly it's a, it should be an exciting time for those who know how to negotiate talk about their value and the fact that they now can actually go to a seller and say, this is this is my worth. This is why you actually want me to be on the other side of this transaction. So, you know, I, I, I'll um, press on this a few times, right? But offer does not mean final, right? Is that I've, I've seen a number of Facebook groups and and people complaining or or saying, look, I, I, I this, this listing is only offering this. So my borrower said, my buyer said, please don't show me those houses, right? Please don't show me those houses. But that that to me is, is, is I, I just find that terrible because here's the thing. If an, if a house is offered at a million dollars, Gustavo, what, what's that house going to sell for? Whatever the market will bear, Paul. If it's, if it's offered at a million, that's just an offer, right? The, and then we negotiate the price from that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the fact that if you look at the negotiation changes now, we, it used to be we had price, seller concessions, uh, repairs, appliances, contingencies, closing timeframes. Those were all the things that you could negotiate before, right? Guess what? Now we just have one more thing, and that's the buyer's agent commission. It's just It's one more part of the negotiation. And so uh, uh, offer, like I said, offer does not mean final, in my opinion. 100%. And I think we're moving to that world. We're moving to that world. Some people kicking and screaming. Uh, but I think uh, the, the way that I express it to, to my audience is just because someone no longer advertises a buyer agent commission does not mean they won't pay one. 
just right. because they're not advertising. Gus, but I'm calling them and they said they're not offering one, then I'll just go to another property. No. Other than that's probably going to be outlawed at some point, I think. Uh, that is right. the wrong approach. That's the opening salvo. Right. Put it in writing, and we're going to see 10 ways to work it into the deal uh, because yep. that's the new world. We're, we're, we're trying to bring the old world into the new world. Why don't we just post it on another website? What that? What's the big deal? You're trying to bring the old world into the new world. This is a new world. Accept right. it. Move on, right? In yep. this new world, it's per deal. And like I just mentioned, in the new world, you have the opportunity to control how much you made, not just what the listing agent free negotiated on your behalf without even knowing you. Right. That was the old. Yep. Let's also recognize that was the old world, too. That was part yep. of it. It's no longer part of this new world. 100 percent. So before we get to the strategies, I want to ask a question. Does it matter how you write up a repair addendum on a property? Like for the loan purposes, does it matter how you write up a repair addendum? Does it matter if you write up, hey, we're going to give a five thousand dollar concession because there's water leaking oh, in the roof. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, they care about the number. I don't think they really care about the roof, right? Or, or seen, you know, I've seen repair denims written up, for example, that say what we're repairing, right? Does it matter how you write that up? And the answer is yes, it does matter, right? Oh. And so the question is, when we're negotiating commission and seller concessions, does it matter? how you write your buyer agent commission into the contract. Oh, 100%. And so that to me is super important is that with seller concessions, we highly recommend to not write it in the, uh, the contract that the seller concessions are going to be able to pay buyer agent commission, right? We we don't, we want to still keep them separated. Why not? Well, one, it, it eats into your seller contributions, right? So if it's written that, seller contribution is going to be used, you know, we're going to give 7% seller contribution, uh, then you might not have enough, right, for repair addendums down the road, right? You you might not have enough down the road if you maxed it out already. And people say, well, Paul, the CFP or the Fannie and Freddie said that buyer agent concession, uh, buyer agent commission is not considered a seller concession. Well, it is if it's written incorrectly. And I've already seen contracts where it's not written correctly. It's written as part of a seller con concession that that amount is going to be used to pay the buyer's agent commission. We need to make sure that it's still being written into there. It also may influence the appraised value. So if the seller concession is huge, but it includes the buyer's commission that's always been included in there, it could it could influence the, the appraised value because there is a line item on the appraisal for sales concessions. So there's also a third reason that everybody said I can't talk about, but it's called customary. Once it becomes customary that the buyer actually pays it, then it actually is going to be considered into seller contributions. We don't want to get into that, but uh, it's you know it's it's so far down the road probably, but it's a, it's a reason we want to continue to write it up in this fashion. So let's just talk very quickly. Here's a chart. Uh, I can send this out to people that want it. Uh, it. I have it written up in a nice little handout for people. But what are the interested party contributions? The seller concession limits, VA max 4% plus closing costs, conventional 3, 10, or 25%, depending upon the uh, the, the down payment. Uh, in, in, uh, investment loans are 2%, by the way, on that. Um, FHA is 6%, and USDA, of course, is 6% as well. So we we you know we on some of these we don't have a lot to work with in seller concessions all right so let's jump into then this is this I've, I've tried to graphically put this together for everybody visually put this together not graphically but visually so what's the right way and what's the the I'm going to call it the not right way so the the right way is to have the seller pay the commission to the agent directly as per most of the agreements I've seen is the seller is paying it to the buyer's agent. Uh, and whatever sales concession is being given to the buyer goes as part of the contract as normal as uh, here in 4%. In Let's say we're giving 4% as a sales concession. We're doing an FHA loan, for example. So there's a 6% limit and 3% uh, is going to the buyer's agent directly. Does that make sense? Good. I got you. And, and you're writing it into the contract that way. Right. The seller. Well, in fact, 
a lot of places the, the the agreement is between the seller and the buyer's agent or broker. It's it it cuts out the listing agent right in many places. And and I know everybody's implemented it differently, but yeah, um, they, they've got new forms basically. It's a new. They, yeah. It's split it out of the listing agreement. It's no longer in the offer. It is a right. its own kind of separate. In a lot of cases, it's its own separate form between the seller. No broker to broker compensation. It's the seller making right. that making that payment. So in this case, I'm saying four percent sales concession. And then uh, on the right side, on the on this side, the same seven percent, right? Same seven percent. But the seller says, "Hey, I'm going to give you seven percent to work with." You do with it what you want. You pay your buyer's agent, you pay closing costs, you pay prepaids, you buy the rate down to zero, do with it what you want at 7%. And it doesn't work, right? Because now we're over the limit of interested party contributions on FHA, on USDA, on con you know most conventional situations. So that's why this is hopefully helps to visually represent uh, why we should do it uh, this way. Okay, so let's keep moving forward then is, here's the gap. Here's what everybody's been waiting for is the gap and how do we bridge the gap? So first, let's talk about what is a commission gap, right? So the buyer, let's say there's a buyer agreement in place, which of course everybody has to have to show homes, right? Buyer agrees to pay 3% to the buyer's agent. Let's say that the seller is offering 1%, right? I'm gonna make a nice dramatic difference here. Uh, how do you get paid the 2% difference, right? That's what we're all here to learn. How do we get paid that 2% uh, difference? So first one is to negotiate your uh, your buyer commission. So the buyer's agent negotiates your commission the way it's always been, right? So uh, the buyer's agent goes in and says, look, you offered 1%. Uh, I need, I, I want to make 3% seller. You need to pay 3% to me. That's part of the offer, right? I'm doing my, my purchase price. I'm doing my uh, sales concessions, whatever those may be. I don't care what those are, but in this case, I'm going to, I need to make 3% and Mr. Seller, that's what you're going to pay me. So easy one layup. First way is negotiate, right? The way it's always been, we get to negotiate. In this case, the, uh, the buyer's agent making that extra 2%, the buyer doesn't have any more money out of their pocket and the net to the seller is 2% less. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. All right. Next one, have the buyer pay the closing costs, right? So in this case, let's say the buyer has the funds to close. The agent says, look, we're going to negotiate hard on price. We're negotiating hard on uh, sales concessions for your closing costs. And instead of me negotiating that 2% for buyer's agent commission, which they might think is just me being greedy, Mr. Buyer, you have the funds. You're going to stroke a $2,000 check in this case. So an example with $100,000 purchase price, nice, easy numbers, because I like simple, easy numbers. We have a 2% gap. And so that buyer is paying $2,000 extra at closing. Okay, Paul, what is it at $400,000? Right, 2%, 400,000, that's $8,000. We can do some simple math here, hopefully. So in this case, the net to the seller is the same. Uh, the buyer's getting uh, paying their $2,000 at closing, and then the buyer's agent is getting their full 3%, right? So in some ways, this allows them to potentially negotiate harder in other areas by eliminating the number of things we're negotiating, right? So as we're going to talk about some other things to use here, but it's how you negotiate is very important in this circumstance. All right, we got some easy ones out of the way. Here we go. Hey, let's raise the purchase price to cover the commission shortage. So kind of piggybacking on number two, if we raise the purchase price to cover the commission shortage, but say, look, we're, we're, we're not going to negotiate on that 2%, but what I'm going to do is raise the purchase price by the gap. So instead of a hundred thousand dollar purchase price, we're going to go to a hundred and two thousand dollar purchase price, and have the seller agree to pay two percent towards the agent commission, right? Not increase the seller's concession by two percent, but just pay two percent in the commission. In a hundred thousand dollar example, that's about thirteen dollars per month, and so the buyer's agent still gets their full three percent, and the seller is netting the same amount. Now, people say to me, well, Paul, what if the appraisal comes in short? 
I have a whole appraisal gap strategy that we can that we can pull out, and they don't have to write that two thousand dollar difference. Uh, in most cases, we have strategies. If you can tell, I love putting together creative strategies, Gustavo, for what how we can how we can deal with real life situations to overcome objections, get people into a house that they want to get yeah. into. And, you know, uh, the first three, Paul, uh, this is probably the one I've seen uh, used the most, at least mm -hmm. early on. The first first 60 days, this is, uh, so far, has been one yep. of the more popular ones, um, especially in the higher cost of living areas where, where, where you know, small percentages kind of, you know, kind of get lost in that, right? And maybe not right. that, might not that be that big a deal. I've seen this one used a lot. And and this is kind of in lieu of I can't negotiate it or they don't want to negotiate it or you know that 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 hey I'm only paying one percent I'm digging my heels into the ground okay well yeah this is a way Let's to get around it. And, and I've so, seen buyer agents kind of have to send the net sheet to the which is like you know that didn't used to happen before buyer right. agents are sending net sheets to with the offer saying hey hey, right. hey don't you know right. this is what I'm trying to do here this is what we're trying to do can you look at your net can we all agree great. Let's put a deal together. Yeah. It's, it's creativity using, yeah. using it to get the point across. Number four, reduce the down payment by 2%. So let's say that we have somebody in this case coming in with 9% down, because that's just the way that their, their, their loan structure worked. 9% down. We say, hey, instead of 9% down, we're going to go to 7% down. And uh, and so we're keeping your cash to close the same, but we're going to increase your monthly payment. In this case, again, it's about thirteen dollars per month uh, to do that. So the the buyer's paying for it through uh, reducing their down payment, and it's uh, costing them a couple of lattes a month. Or guys, this is almost one latte a month, right? But uh, yeah, again, it's fra double frappuccino, yeah. venti, venti, right? right. It's a venti. <laughs> So the buyer's agent's getting their full 3%, the seller's getting the same, and, and the cash to close is the same, right? It's just we're, we're increasing the monthly payment slightly to be able to, to cover that. So $400,000 house, we're at $52 more per month. If $52 stands between somebody buying a $400,000 house and not, we need to have a conversation with that person about buying a $400,000 house, maybe. I'm sorry. Right? That's how I look at it, right? Is let's so it and again, how bad do you want the house, right? Maybe this, you know, so it could be some of these things are going to be walkaway things. They're going to be like, look, that seller is not a seller we want to work with. He, we he won't negotiate, and uh, and so I I don't want to pay fifty two dollars more a month. Let's go look at a different house. That's okay, right? That's an option. I didn't put it in here, but walk away is one of the options, right? One hundred percent. And you know, I think I see a lot of agents have a lot of anxiety. Because you know, before you know, I talk about I talk about this in terms of the old world and the new. I, I like to make that comparison. I think it's useful. Before, mm -hmm. as a buyer's agent, you could get away with never talking about compensation. You could right. get away with never having. I mean, the pros did it a lot, but but most right. agents, I'll be honest, me me as a buyer agent when I was a buyer agent, we didn't really have that conversation. Even even my buyer agreement, because I had buyers agreements for years, it wasn't required. I'll be honest with you, it said whatever the seller's offering. That was my compensation. I, it was right. in my, I had a buyer's agreement. I never even put a number in there. Like whatever is it, I'll take whatever the seller's offering, right? Because of, yeah. because that was the, it was, was customary. Nowadays, right? We should, some buyer agents feel dirty. They feel awkward. They feel like they don't want to have a very simple conversation like this with their buyers. And, you know, Paul, it's crazy to see this play out in real life. This is no longer theoretical. We're seeing it play out. The agents that have the comfort, the confidence, it's confidence, a lot of it, right? To have this conversation are finding that it's the easiest conversation they've ever had, right? Yes. Because they're like approaching it with confidence. And we're going back to that word, which is becoming, agents hate this. I don't know what, value, okay? Because that is what it is. Right. What? Where does that confidence come from? It comes from believing in your own value. I mean, I, I, I people yes. hate that word, uh, and they think it's jargon. It's mumbo jumbo. It is absolutely not. The agents that understand that word are making more money in this world. The agents that don't understand that world that only see this as an equation, right? Like how you know are, are going to struggle with these conversations. It's going to be really awkward for them. It's anxiety inducing. The agent that understands the value they bring to the conversation, to the transaction, to the buyer. They have no issue with this. Right. Same conversation in both ends. You kind of decide 
how you want to approach it. I recommend approaching it with the confidence to talk about how much money you're going to make from this deal. Before, we never had to. Now we have to. It The confidence comes from that value. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Totally agree. I th and you got to practice it too. I mean, that, you know, you got to practice it. You got to role play it. You got to know what you're going to say. You have to know your objections. You have to know your value, know your worth. And sometimes, as we'll I mean, we're going to talk about this later. Sometimes you bring in a third party to help you to solidify that value. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. That's that, that's the point I wanted to get to because some agents be really they need a little bit of help with this, right? They need so, they need they need a partner to have this right. conversation. Yeah. So number five, increase the rate to cover the gap, right? So seller says, nope, we're paying. I'm, I'm only paying 1%. We can't get anything. So how do we do that? We increase the rate. In this example, uh, it was about a half a percent increase in rate, about $32 more per month in payment. And the buyer's agent still gets their full 3%. So people have said, well, what about low down payment borrowers, right? Well, one of the ways a low down payment borrower can handle a commission gap Let's say a VA loan with zero down. Let's say an FHA loan with three, three and a half percent. Or uh, you could do this strategy, right? It's going to increase your monthly payment. Yes. However, it gets the house of your dreams. It gets you on the path of home ownership and wealth generation by buying a home, right? So this is a great one to say, okay, we're, we're just going to increase the rate a bit. Uh, and it's different day to day how much that rate amount is, but it's one option that we have available to us. So awesome, awesome. Any, any questions on that? So I know that uh, people. I, I, I did know this. This is one of the ones I discovered uh, from your content. I'm like, what? I didn't even know that was an option. That's good to know. The the rate one. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. what? I didn't. Absolutely. I didn't, I didn't know that yeah. was an option. That's awesome. Yeah, there's there's. I mean, when people say, Paul, what's your rate? Well, I got rates from four and a half to eight. You know, we pick the rate, and the, at each rate, there's a cost or there's a credit. So. In this case, we, we can increase the rate and do that. Uh, next one is use all or portion of, of the seller concessions uh, to uh, uh, towards the buyer's agent commission, right? So they've negotiated, you know, a, a 6% uh, on an FHA loan. Maybe they, you know, everybody says, well, Paul, you're just, you're moving money around here. It's true. Maybe they were going to use part of that 6% to buy down the interest rate. Maybe they were going to do a short, uh, you know, a 2-1 buy down or a 1-1 buy down or so now we shift around. How do we get? How do we make sure we cover closing costs? How do we make sure we cover prepaids, the the buyer's agent commission? So I know I said let's not use seller contribution towards it, but in this case, you could right. Now, the thing to keep in mind here, though, if you're doing it this way as an agent, you should go back and let and and rewrite the contract. Say, hey, we're going to lower seller con concessions for closing costs, and you're going to give me three percent. So that if there's repair concessions down the road, you don't have to do it at that point, right? So that if you're already up against the top of your sales concession, you're not all of a sudden going over the top of it. And as we talked about earlier, you're not going to mess up your appraisal, right? By showing this huge seller commission for closing costs, but the buyer commission is the buyer's agent commission is part of that, right? The 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 appraisers has never cared how much the buyer. Uh, was getting paid, buyer's agent was getting paid, right? So I know that that's a little complicated, but it's the way that I want to see it done. I want to see you go back and say, fine, reduce sales concession to the buyer, increase the compensation to the broker. From the seller side, yeah. From the seller to the broker. So here's one. <clears throat> here's one. This one, now we're getting, now we're getting fun, right? We're talking low down payment borrower here who says, look, I don't have more money. We can't increase the rate any. We, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm tapped on all these different fronts. What could we do? Well, we could move to a down payment assistance program. So from an FHA program, uh, FHA loan to a down payment assistance program or from a, a VA. By the way, there are VA down payment assistance programs. We could use that. So we, we've exhausted all other options and we say, look, it's going to cost you a little more per month, but it's going to give you the cash you need to buy the house you love, to start building wealth through real estate. Let's, let's look at this as one of the tools. Yes, it's more expensive for the buyer. Not going to lie. DPAs are more expensive, but it's an option. It's a way, it's a strategy. I don't think, and you know what? 
Well, here's what's crazy, Gustavo. It may actually put more money in the buyer's pocket because they're getting all their down payment covered. Let's say in this case, uh, you know, one to one and a half percent, right? Because now they have some extra cash. So maybe it will actually help them have some moving costs or deal with things that they're that they're going to deal with. So in this case, the buyer's in the payment's going to increase, almost guarantee it. Uh, and the buyer's agent gets their full three and the net to the seller is the same. So this is where we're starting to get creative, I think. These 100%. are things I haven't heard a lot of other people talk about. Interesting one. Yeah. And people, and this is this is the segment people are nervous about. Low down payment buyers. I think right. only about 99.9% .9 of the concerns I see from the agent community are from agents that mostly work with these folks. These can be first time home buyers. It can be just lower income buyers. It can be, right. it, it's a large segment. At any given time, this is 30% of the market, right? So yep. this is where a lot of agents have a lot of these fears. And I love it. That we're like, take, like going forward head on. Head on. And giving yeah. people options, give people options. We can't make, we shouldn't make these decisions for buyers. We no. shouldn't make the decision, right? Do you want it's more upfront? Do you want to uh, put a little bit more on the monthly payment? Do you rather have more cash? Up Some people will want the cash up front. Hey, you know what? I want more cash up front because I'm going to, you know, I don't know, buy the furniture, buy the patio, you know, remodel when I, when I get in, apply, you know, whatever reason, don't make the decision for the buyer, give right. them the options and let them decide. Absolutely. That's what this is all about is options and, and decisions and then showing them the wealth that they might be giving up by not, not, not buying now, right? Because yeah. longer they wait, the, 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 the more they're not building wealth through real estate. Uh, number eight is get a gift, right? 35% of our first time home buyers are getting some sort of a gift. So the buyer's agent can't, uh, you know, is unable to negotiate the amount. Say, look, Mr. Buyer, you got to come up with two two percent more. Mrs. Buyer, you got to come up with two percent more, because that's our agreement, right? Our three percent agreement. How do we get there? Well, how about a gift from mom and dad, Uncle Bernie, you know, somebody coming in, friend, family member coming in to give a gift to cover uh, the the shortage, right? We get gifts on thirty five percent of our first time homebuyers get some sort of family assistance when they're buying, right? So awesome. nice, easy, but you got to just you have to be able to think about it at the time to say, well. Here's one option. Do you have somebody who can give you a gift? Gotcha. And th is there some limit on that, Paul? Like how much people can contribute, or is there, or it just depends on on the loan product? What what, what we think about that? Um, so it just depends. I mean, it depends on the different loan products what the what the gift amounts can be. Um, so it would just you know it's part of our strategy. It's it's part of our strategic conversation we have with the buyer when we're when we're involved in upfront conversations, right? Yeah. So. And, cool. and let, let's be honest, right? I expect most buyer's agents and most listing agents are going to be able to come to an agreement without having to employ these strategies, right? I think, and I've seen most people have been able to move forward with, with as normal, if you want to call it, but to, to negotiate their commission with the seller and the listing agent without ever having to employ these things. I don't want to scare a buyer into thinking that they're going to have to come across these things. But I do want them to know that we have solutions if we do come across it as part of the process, right? It's always good to know that somebody's got your back with different solutions and strategies. Here's one. I, I haven't seen this one in many, in, many, uh, in many presentations. If we shift from conventional to FHA, right? Even if they're doing a little higher down payment, uh, maybe they're doing 5% down, we could shift from conventional to FHA. Normally, in most cases, uh, the increase in rate we don't have to increase the rate much on an FHA to get some lender credit that we can use to pay the buyer's agent commission. Okay, so 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 this is this is I know I, I remember seeing this one. So why that back back to me? So so, so I, I don't. Know. Here's the thing: I don't expect any real estate agent watching this to understand this strategy. In fact, <laughs> I don't really. I mean. I, I, we each have our lanes that we stay in, right? 100%. My lane is creative solutions to help get to closing. And so I don't expect you to know this strategy as a real estate agent. 100%. I'm glad. because I have No way. I've not heard of this before. But I will tell you that if we <laughs> shift from FHA, from conventional to FHA, we, we uh, most of the time, even at the same interest rate, um, we actually improve the amount of lender credit that's available at that same interest rate. Now, there's mortgage insurance changes. So it's got to be looked at very strategically. 
to see what's this doing to the monthly payment, the cash to close, uh, 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 what is it doing to it? But it's a strategy that we're employing and saying we Love have, it. this is one of them. All right. Love now, it. number 10, I, I know I told you there's two more bonuses though, right? So number okay. 10, you lean in, right? You say, okay, I'm going to give up a portion of my commission and, and I lean in. Now, do you want to know the other two? Because I didn't give, I, uh, the Go last time it. I Go did this it. presentation, I, I think you remember, I didn't give the other two. Nope. Right? You had you had to reach out to me to give it. And that's the cliffhanger. I should leave you with the cliffhanger. But because <laughs> I'm feeling very generous today. Love it. I'm sick. The other two, here's the other two. The FHA, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to go detailed in this, but with if we switch to an FHA 203K and do extremely minor repairs, we can cover a commission gap. Interesting. So the, for people who know, FH, FHA 203K is when you kind of get, you know, uh, repair costs kind of included repair right. uh into into the loan you know uh if i, I know some people that do like house hacking do stuff like that so you're saying that yeah. there's more uses than just that you can actually use so, this yeah to help so cover with the 203k Interesting. I, I, I actually i'm not going to share the secret sauce i'm i'm telling you i'm not sharing uh -huh. the actual it's, possible. Secret sauce it's an option it's an option but I'm going to tell you that if we do, you know, a thousand dollars of repair, so maybe we need some new carpet, some new paint. Get out, really? Yeah. Right. That's the interest awesome. rate goes up by maybe an, you know, in, an eighth. It's it's very small, but we can cover a gap using a two or three k. So well, interesting. It's again, it's we're doing it. We've used it to cover appraisal gaps as well. So if anybody out there is having appraisal gaps. We actually cover an appraisal gap using a 203K as well. Very, very crafty. Sorry, I'm not going to give you the secret sauce. The other, <laughs> number 12, this one, again, big bonus. Waive your escrows to reduce the cash to close. So if we don't include the tax and insurance payment in the loan, we don't have as much cash to close from the buyer. And therefore, we've opened up some money to be able to pay a buyer's agent commission. Interesting. And you know, and and for that escrow, would that have to be paid if you don't include in the loan, it gets paid up front, or how does that work? So it's it's no, it's paid by you every year. You pay your own insurance and you pay the tax assessor yourself. So oh, I got you. I got you. instead of like being. I got you. I totally understand what right? you're saying. Right. So hey. instead of the lender collecting it and then redistributing it to your insurance company into your tax authority no way interesting and it can be thousands of thousands of dollars oh, that you're, i you know, I, you're, I live in i live in texas i know that, that those, you know yeah. those checks are those checks are big yes so another that's that's 11 and 12 uh which Wild. are uh, uh, i think really amazing ways now here's the thing i don't want you guys to know how to do it what i want you to know is there's somebody who knows how to do it that's me yeah. Uh, and then here's the thing, mix and match, right? We can mix and match all of these options without, you know, so it could be we raise the rate a little bit and we get a gift a little bit, right? We cover a percent here and a percent here. We increase the price and we use a gift. We lower your commission and increase the rate. It doesn't have to be one solution. It, we take 12 different solutions, we mash them together and we come up with a great strategy. That's what I'm known for. We're going to create an extraordinary strategy to get there. I love it. So, I love it. As we look at this, you know, this is kind of a recap, right? We've got all the different ways that a buyer's agent's only involved in, in one. If we involve uh, you're reducing your commission, seller's paying three, and then the buyer's coming out of pocket on uh, on all the others. Got it. Got now, it. Got it. Uh, how do we partner okay. together? to protect your commission? How do you partner with your loan officer to protect your commission? I'm not saying that I'm the only person that can do this in the face of the planet. I wanna show you if, you know, if your loan officer doesn't have these strategies put together, uh, I'm here to help. I would love to work with anybody and work with people all across the country. I work with agents every day all across the country. I'm I'm right here in Texas, so I can, I have, I have hands that go either direction. Uh, and my cell phone is, so part, here's our partnership roadmap to contract. And this is part of my elite partner program that we offer to agents free of charge. It's just what we do to really make the partnership even stronger to bring more referrals back to you. It's all about bringing warm referrals back to you as an agent partner. And it's also about increasing the stickiness at the front end of the process. I'm going to go through this quickly. Anybody who has questions on the EPP or this partnership to contract, 
reach out. But first, it starts with actually, I'm going to ask you a question, Gustavo. When you last time you went out to dinner, or maybe you were looking up to see a car repair company or any kind of a service, did you just, you know, open up your yellow pages? We don't have those anymore. But did you go on on your phone and <laughs> and the first person that came up, you just went nope. with them? Absolutely not. Or Many did more. you go on to? I mean, did you go on to Google, Yelp? Right, did you go into at, a Facebook I'm group? At the stars. I'm looking at those yellow stars, man. 100. Yeah. percent Either either a personal recommendation, which is you know proxy for that, or I'm right. literally looking at how many stars and how how many stars and then how many reviews you got. I 100. Mean, I, 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 that's how I that's how I do it customarily now. Whatever city I'm in, which is crazy. Yeah. So maybe you go into a Facebook group, a local group, and say, "Hey, who's the best barber in town? Who's the best whatever in town?" You take that that third party validation from a total stranger as a great recommendation, right? I do. Gosh, we see that all the time. Who's the best realtor in blank area, right? So, um, and so here's what I'm saying is when you, when you send a customer to me, when you send a client to me, the first phone call is a loyalty uplift. It's a third party validation. The first phone call when that buyer calls us is say, we say, you know, Jane, oh my gosh, so great to have you. How did, you know, how do you know Gustavo, right? How did you get to know Gustavo? Oh, he was at the baseball game that my kids and this and that and that. And he just seems like a great guy. And, and we're looking forward to working to him. And what I say next is you grab the golden ticket, the Willy Wonka golden bar. You grab the ring or uh, the golden ring. You hit the jackpot with Gustavo. Because if I was buying a home in your in that area, I would use Gustavo as well. He is so awesome. He's so amazing. And then I insert your value proposition right there. He is the best at boom, boom, boom. So what I do with my agents is call them up beforehand and know their value proposition, right? If Piper, one of her clients comes over, I use Piper's value proposition. If Jane's, I use Jane's value proposition. So I'm going to cement right there. The value proposition that you just delivered to them, I'm going to cement that right there, Right. Now, that's like that's like seeing the five star. It's five star reviews, re reinforcing 100%. it. You, then, you are the cosign. You are the 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 third party. You know, make, making yeah. that recommendation. Hundred percent. In it. fact, we had a client recently. Sorry, we had a client recently who uh, has been working with an agent for over four months. Buyer's agent wearing them out. Right, five yeah. offers you know, multiple houses, over 50 houses. And they called up, they called me up after the NAR settlement because now they have to get a buyer's agent signed. And they said, oh man, they want 3%. And they said, I don't know, we may just switch agents. I, I, <clears throat> are these guys worth it? <clears throat> and then I, I reinforced the value proposition of that agent. And then I said, they've shown you all these houses. They've put in all these offers. They've been at inspections. They've done all of this work with you. They've done a phenomenal job of protecting you from those houses that had hidden things that you weren't going to see. Of course you should sign it. Boom. Signed, sealed, delivered, moved on. So we're, but that's the partnership. That's where your lender can be a partner with you exactly. to really cement the value. <clears throat> Part of our process um, is commission strategy. So we talk to you about what's the commission you're, you're, you have on your, your signed. What are the options and solutions uh, that you're looking at? Then we do a pre-approval consultation, strategy consultation with the client. And we go through, here's your pre-approval. Here's your wealth building. Here's what it looks like in terms of what your wealth is going to look like in five and 15 years. And then we talk about what are the commission strategies that we might have to employ based upon each client's st structure. So it may, may be, look, first and foremost, Gustavo is a, an expert negotiator. He is going to do everything he can to get that X percent that he has in your contract. And you know what? I'm actually confident that he's going to get that 99% of the time. But if it doesn't, we have 12 strategies for being able to accomplish it. And yeah. for you, Mr. And Mrs. Client, we see these as your top three strategies that are available to you. All right. So what you're saying, Paul, is that I don't have to memorize these 12 strategies and all the ins and outs and how they work, right? Please right. say that because that's bring them to, my life you a lot bring easier. them to your lender, and your lender says, based upon this client's financial picture and situation, 
And we, 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 and again, I don't expect Gustavo is going to go and negotiate it. I do expect that because he is a bad mamma jamma negotiator. I was going to say something else there, but you know, you're badass, and so you're going to go negotiate it. And if you know, if you're sitting here watching this right now, you don't know that you're a, an amazing negotiator. You better go, better become a, an amazing negotiator. Go read some books. Go ask people who are. Go shadow other real estate agents. We're then going to do proactive communication. We have a process for pre-showing, pre-offer, and at offer, right? So what is the strategies? We want you to communicate often. We want you to, um, sorry, that's the next slide. So we want you to be involved with us. We we, we have a strategy for pre-showing. What what are they offering? Do we need to, do we even need to worry about it or not? Um, and so we want that that great communication with the agent partner and us to make sure that the customer feels totally comfortable in what's happening. Wow. We also um, we also use a strategy here, and this is part of our um, this part of our loan strategy that we put together a total cost analysis, and we can put together here's look here's seller paid compensation, kind of the way it's always been done. Here's if you have to come out of pocket two percent. What if we increase the price by two percent? What if we increase the price and the oh, appraisal comes awesome. in short? So that's what we I'm need. Gonna that's what we need. Take the twelve strategies, put it side by side with the ones that are relevant to that client, and then say, "We got your back. We're okay. We're good. It's you know, it's just going to cost you a little bit extra per month, or a little bit more out of your pocket, or what." It, so this is part of the overall presentation that we do to uh, the client. Love it. So I know we're coming to the close here, coming to the end. Um, I want to just implore on the real estate agents that a strong agent lender partnership is, I think, more important than other ever. I'm strengthening my relationships even further with my real estate partners, and I'm engaging us early, engage us often. We're here to help protect your commission, right? Number one, you're going to protect it yourself, and I know that because everybody on here is probably an amazing negotiator. In the case that the that the sellers dug in, the listing agents dug in, nobody wants to pay it. We've got your back. I have solutions. I have strategies. And I will make it in a way that if, if the client loves that house and the client wants to buy that house, I'm going to find a way to help them buy that house without pulling money out of your pocket. You know, I, I, I'm going to end with a quick story, Gustavo. I talking with a broker the other day. And he had uh, three listings post NAR settlement, right? So he, he had three listings. And on those three listings, uh, he was the, the seller was offering compensation to the buyer. The, the, the negotiating strategy that he chose to use as the listing agent was to not tell anyone what it was on those three Interesting. listings. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> and so he he told every there was 12 offers between those three houses. He told every buyer's agent to say, look, send me your full complete package of offer, ha price, concessions, uh, buyer's agent commission, send me the whole package and we'll negotiate from there. Right. Send me what you want. How many offers had three percent, the three percent that they happened to be offering? I, I would say half, maybe less than half. Zero. Damn. Wow. Zero. Interesting. In my best Barry White voice, zero. <laughs> so that is crazy. And, and they that were willing crazy. to pay three. So now this listing agent is going to go out and you know what he's going to do? He's going to market that he's the guy that can help you as a, as you know, in your listing, he can help you pay less. Because he's 100%. so I know I know some people hate the strategy, some people like it. It's one that you can use or not. But the thing is, value 100%. yourself, right? Now, maybe uh, 100 percent a lot, it's maybe a, some of those go back to the V agents, word, this V word that the, the, the yeah, cynics, sorry. you know, the, you know, uh defame. Uh, you know, Paul, I have a, a almost identical story. Listing agent had one listing. He did the he followed, he actually did it. This wasn't a, this wasn't a strategy. Seller, this was a few months ago. Seller kind of forced him to do this, right? He didn't want to. Said, right. Hey, we should. This is what's going on. This is I've never done this before. I don't know what's going to happen. So I was like, tell him it's nothing. If we need to, but he literally told him, gave him the number. If we need to, I'll pay three. If we need to, but maybe I don't need to. Why don't we find out, right? So and and he said, and he was shocked. Capital S. No one asked for that. 
Yeah. He goes, and, and what they ended up, and they ended up paying, uh, 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 and he got all the rea- he got all the spectrum of reactions from the agents. You can imagine, right? It was a few months ago, and he's like, you know, <laughs> they weren't happy, but they ended up paying, and he goes, they ended up paying way less than what the seller was willing to pay, willing to pay. So, so agents, you're more in control. You're more in control, but if you know how to put a deal together, and this might be partnering with the right lender, I'm I'm more convinced now than ever. That I think the lenders that are better at these numbers, you know, that they're, they're, they're you know uh, more experienced how to put a deal together where you get paid uh, whatever the market will bear. Yeah, I think that's going to be such a huge value add to buyer agents getting some advice on how to make this work, hearing these stories because you know people have to understand that just because you want to get paid what you feel you're worth doesn't mean there's net less net to the seller. Okay, right. A few of these strategies. If you saw that little table you put at the end, which I think is key, not all of these are paid about by the seller, actually. Not necessarily. Right. Not necessarily. Okay. They can net the exact same amount and you can actually make what you feel you're worth. But but yeah, 100%. Paul, I agree with you 100%. I'm glad you're hearing the same examples that I'm seeing out in the wild. The yeah. educated, professional agent can thrive in this environment. If you're not educated, you're not trained, you don't have the right scripts, you don't have the right partners, I think you are going to make less money, right? I think you are. Yep. The, the, the potential is there, but you're in more control. Absolutely. So I appreciate everybody's time today. I uh, appreciate you, Gustavo, for reaching out and uh, having me in this wonderful group. Um, I, I'm just trying to share these strategies with the real estate community so they know that there's, there's, you know, uh, the, I, I, in a lot of ways, I, I use the strategies to be able to talk about the negotiating strategies, right? Because I do think it's so important that, uh, that, w- that, that these stories get out that the, hey, we, we do have ways to solve problems, right? The lending community, at least I'm here to help people. I'm here to help um, you uh, and make sure that you know, your know how to, how to, keep your pays, right? So 12 ways so that you can keep your commission and, um, and do it in a cool way, right? Where it doesn't, it, it, it can be a, it can be a give a little, take a little, it can be a, you know, and, and honestly, I do think people are going to make more in the, in the future world. I think, uh, there are opportunities out there in, in, in coming up for uh, the really strong negotiators. A hundred percent, you know, a- agents that understand their value, capital V value, that have the confidence, that know the value that they're adding, I think will have no issue uh, yeah. uh, making more money than they did before. The potential is there. The opportunity is there. Are you going to are you going to take it or not? As always, it's your choice. I tell people the, the better trained, the better educated, the better partnerships that agents have, those agents are going to make more money. And I also tell them another little little the, the kicker. That's always been true. It's only right. it's, a, it's a little bit more true now than I think it was yeah. only a, a couple of months ago. So, Paul, appreciate you. My last question is always: How can people connect with you? You're already way ahead of the curve. This is how people can connect with you, Paul. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. I would you have an open invitation. I'd love to talk to you again in a few months, so we yeah. can talk about more of these real world examples, more of what's Absolutely. actually happening in the wild, successful examples. We get thrown all of these hypothetical doomsday examples all the time. I want right. to hear real examples of people making these new rules work and being successful. So open invitation, man, whenever you'd like. I'd love to hear more about what's happening in the real world. Paul, thanks so much, man. Thank you. Take care. 